Hey, what's up gamers and welcome to the Bears and Beans channel. Here is another exciting special on our Going Medieval Tips and Tricks. So today we're going to talk about game settings and customization. So obviously, you start up the game, this is the screen you're going to see, right? This is the first thing right out the gate. Now, before we proceed, one quick disclaimer. Everything that I'm going to show you is my personal method of how I go about setting certain things for certain play styles. Those of you that do watch my other videos, I have certain settings that maybe I tell you, oh, you know, we're only going to deal with people of a certain height or people of a certain weight or people with a certain skill set or people with a certain attribute or we're going to play on a map that leans one way or the other. I'm going to explain how I go about setting up all of those things. But again, this is my method. This is how I do it. I know there's tons of other ways, tons of other opinions. This is just mine. So let's begin. First things first, new game, right? You're looking to start out fresh. You click new game. You're going to have to pick a game mode. So that's number one right out the gate. Pick your game mode. Standard, peaceful, survival. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Now, standard is going to be your average gameplay. As it says, your sediment will experience enemy raids. Those are going to happen, as well as environmental events. Things like crop blight, things like... Thor's Hammer, which is a lightning storm event, things like Hail, all of those have various effects and they will affect your people as well as, you know, your buildings, your crops, your animals, things like that. So you have environmental events and then obviously raids. Raids are going to be enemies coming in. Now raids can either be spontaneous raids, like a group of cannibals wanting to come in and just eat your people up, or it could be that a villager fled from another village, wants to join you, and they're being pursued by a raiding party that wants to get them back. Those are kind of the different raids, right? And then they're going to come with a various number of either melee play, uh, excuse me, melee fighters or archers. And then as it progresses, you can even get trebuchets, which will do building damage, stuff like that. And then various degrees of those melee fighters, of those archers, right? All the way up to like a master level where they're pretty much going to be almost like fighting another human player. The AI is very, very intricate, and I personally, I love the way it does it. It's, it can be a little dumb, and you can trick it at times, but there are other times where you're like going up against a Master Archer, it knows to kind of avoid a certain distance, you know, because it's going to be within your Archer's range of fire, and they'll kind of wait it out. You'll see that in some of my other gameplays. So standard, it's going to kind of tilt as you progress, right? So if you're progressing really slow, then the raids are going to be kind of on the lower end because it's going to be tilted to wherever you are. Peaceful, exactly what it is. No raids, no events. I kind of think of this as creative mode from Minecraft, right? This is where there's not going to be any kind of enemies, any kind of worries like that. You can just focus on building, advancing, surviving, the simple stuff, right? No, no outside factors. Now, survival is if you want a little bit more of a challenge. So you're going to see the same things you would in standard. However, survival keeps pace at where the game thinks you should be at this level. So if it thinks that you should be ready for 10 raiders and you're clearly only equipped to maybe take on two or three, it's going to hit you with 10. If it thinks that by this point in time, you should be ready for 15, ready for 20, it's going to throw that at you. Because again, it's going to scale based off of where it thinks you should be based on a predetermined algorithm, right? Regardless of where you actually are. And it's going to continue to tilt to get harder and harder and harder. So again, this is just my quick breakdown of the game modes. Standard peaceful survival. I personally always do survival because you get far more raids. The raids get progressively harder. It becomes much more of a challenge. And that just makes for damn good content. So let's say I'm going to, you know, go survival. And I want to go the hardest difficulty there is. It says recommended for players who want a tough survival challenge. Now you can go into custom. Let's go into custom and I'll show you what this is. Some of my playthroughs I've made comments like I'm going to swing this to really push. Right. So event strength multiplier. I jacked that up to 300%. That way if event an event does spawn it's 300%. So three times more likely to be something severe. And then I can set the wound severity, animal spawning, 
plant yield, all this stuff, right? So you can go in and most of these are already at the default levels. So the only thing that I personally like to change is I bump up how often the events happen. And then if you come down here, you can choose the individual events. So do I want the random likelihood that it's a thunderstorm, whatever. So I can turn all this off, right? And just set it to where it's, you know, no hostile enemies, no domestic events, no hailstorms, no cold snaps, no heat waves, and have it set to where it's only enemy raids. That means every time an event is triggered through the, you know, the background AI, through the gameplay, it's going to be an enemy raid. And it's going to be 300% stronger than it normally would be. Right, so it's gonna be three times harder. And then everything else I pretty much like to use. This bottom one, whether or not you wanna deal with trebuchets. I like to turn this off when I'm at such a higher rate because then that's how you get more of the ground combat. You're gonna get a mix of melee and archers, but you're gonna get like 20 or 30 of them attacking your like four people village. Right, so it's gonna be very, very fun. Definitely gonna need to use some tactics and something like that. But again, this is all the different settings you can go through. They have little things right here that'll explain to you what it is, what it's for, right? You can basically neutralize the mood of your settlers. So if you want them to just be, you know, cold and heartless all the time. Upside is you're not going to get any negative mood, but the downside is you're not going to get any of the positive mood things either. Um, enemy hit points, right? So you can make it to where the enemies are super weak, where pretty much they're just one shot every single time. You can adjust rot speed way down so that way stuff essentially never rots same with de decomposition barter value you can up that to where you know they're willing to do a little bit more with you you know give you more bang for your buck stuff like that global work speed you can up that if you want the people to work a lot faster um yeah retaliation everything like that so it's all going to be right here under the custom settings i usually just go i'll start it maybe difficult and then if it's not really that much of a challenge then i'll bump it up to hard and if it's still not a challenge i'll take the hard settings over to custom and then just bump up the likelihood and the strength of the enemy raids but for now let's just click on hard now let's go to our next thing these are our starting conditions this is going to determine what your game essentially is right and you can see my long list of of ones that i have for all my different playthroughs the new life and lone wolf those are going to be the two that you'll have on the base game the rest of these i have all made myself so Mole People, which I just did for one of my specials. Naked and Afraid, that was another special. My Christmas episodes, I did the Northern Lights. Olympus, that's something that I messed up and I'm going to come in the future and fix. And then Primal Ways, and then my Viking playthrough, Valhalla, that you guys are watching right now. Right? So something like Northern Lights. The big thing with this was I started with, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And then I wanted it to be a refuge for elves. That was the story. So I set Settler Constraints. One of the settler constraints was that their height was only allowed to be between the range of 100 to 120 centimeters. Basically the smallest possible and then smaller weight range as well. Age, I just left. That's kind of the default, 22 to 42. I started with the five, right? I made it about 50-50, male, female, because that didn't matter to me. I wanted them to be oak brethren, right? Because the whole Christmas spirit, everything like that is kind of a non-Christian. And I kind of view restitutionists as being like a Catholic Christian kind of. Whereas Oak Brethren are more like a pagan, right? So that's kind of, I went with the whole idea of Yule and Father Christmas. But again, that was just this playthrough. Um, I did a series originally called Rise of Dwarves for that one. It's not on here, but because I, I deleted it, there was just too much that needed to be fixed. But that one, I did the same thing where I set a height range. And so this is what you would do. So let's walk through how I would do, go about doing this. You click add new. Let's give it a... We're just going to type tips and tricks, right? Because that's what we're doing. You give it a short. Now, all these starred things, you have to put something. So I'll just put blah. And then the starting narrative is blah, blah, blah. Right? We're getting started. Starting season. Pick what season you want it to start in. You go with the lone wolf, the one that's already pre-installed. That's going to be winter. Um, and then I believe spring is for the new beginning. Some of mine I like to put into summer. I like to Naked and Afraid. I did that one starting in autumn. That way they basically had about 12 days to prep for winter. And then winter was upon them. So if you want a little bit more of a challenge, that's always really fun. Doing it in the dead of summer is also really fun because you have to prep everything for like an autumn harvest. 
but basically only surviving off of like the fishing and the hunting and then the gathering stuff that would only be available in summer because you don't have a spring harvest to survive off of. So that can also be a little bit more tricky. But for now, let's just say spring. Number of settlers. How many do you want to start out with? You want one, two, three. Right. So let's say I wanted to start off with a full range of 10 settlers, right? Say I wanted to start off with 99. Nope, can't. It automatically blocks you at 10, right? Well, what if I wanted to do 52? Nope, you can only have 10, right? So max out at 10. In game, you can have more. I've had settlements that have at 13, 14, 15. But as far as the settler constraints for starting a new scenario, you can only start with the max of 10. And you can have as little as one, right? So let's say we want to just, you know, let's make this a four man. Or, you know what, let's make it a, a couple, a little duo, right? Then we could set our age range. Let's say uh, 21 because that's drinking age. And then 25, right? And then you, this is where you would do the height. So you're like, oh, I only want, I will all hit one. And then I'll click over so you can see 100 is the minimum. And then I usually just go 120. So there, I want a bunch of elves, little dwarves, right? Or say I want giants. Go 999. All right, let's go 999. So 210 is the highest. So then I'll go down 190. So there, now I just want these gigantic, tall, beautiful people. But here, let's go short, right? And then weight range. Let's make them chubby, right? They're, they're little dwarves. So 120... 100 right so they're they're going to be muy gordo as we say <laughs> and then again masculine feminine it shows you right here so if you input zero they'll be all dudes if you input 100 they'll be all chicks all right 50 you're going to get half and half same thing here it tells you right here zero if you want them to be all restitutionists 100 if you want them to be all oak brethren so you can go ahead and change that number accordingly, right? So if there's two of them, I want one to be one, one to be the other. Or I can say zero and zero, right? So I want two dudes, and I want them both to be restitutionists. Now, here is where you can pick all the goodies that you start off with. Now, let's say I want this playthrough to be a little sadistic, and I want them to be cannibals. So you can come here, and you can actually go Settler Constraints, and you can force a perk. You come right here to Cannibal. And then you just go in and say 100%. I want every single person that I start with and every single future villager that comes into the camp, 100% they are going to be a Cannibal. Or say you're like, oh, I only want 75%. So three out of four. You know, that's a good, good bit, right? But you're like, no, I want 100% of them to be Cannibals. Then you can set that. You can add more too. You can start off with some animals. Say, I want a chicken. Right, let's let's start off with five five female chickens. I want them all to be young. Let's go another settler constraint. I want override a stat. Right, I want their hit points to be two hundred. Oh no, a hundred between a hundred and a hundred. Okay, that's kind of a bad one. Um, let's go settler constraint override stats. Right, religious activity. I can set it down to zero and five. So they'll basically need, you know, damn near no activity. You know, you can you can do that. Or you can just go zero to zero. Where then you never need to worry about religious activity for them at all. They'll have a religious leaning because that's part of their characteristic, their personality. Like right here, right? We set them to be all restitutionists. But then by overriding the religious activity stat, we make it to where we never have to build a shrine or an altar church whatever we'd never have to worry about that because they're always going to be 100 percent satisfied with religious activity now there's equipment you know if we want to give them a boar head piece say or a buckler which is a shield crossbow you know we can go ahead and click on all these things so let's say crossbow right and then it's going to ask you the quality so you can do it where it's just the greatest thing ever where it's a total piece of crap somewhere in between right and you can click material um, something like this, like a piece of clothing, right? It's got linen, wool, various hides and pelts. So you can decide what you want it to be made out of. That will kind of adjust more of the look. Um, some of the other items like swords, for instance, a steel sword is going to be a little bit better than an iron sword as far as the stats. So that's something to consider as well, right? But we got this duo. We're going to give them both a crossbow. So they're both going to have good wood crossbows. They're both going to have winter clothes. They're going to have five chickens. They're not going to need any religious activity, right? Because they're too busy being cannibals. 
All right, so this is a good little layout. But there's tons of other stuff you can do in here too, right? You can get structure kits. So if you want them to go ahead and start off with a backgammon table, right? So they already have a backgammon table kit. They don't have to get the materials. They can just build it right away. Resources, right? So, oh, we want them to start off with some ale. Let's have them start off with 100 ale. Something like that. You know, very simple. Research items. I want them to go ahead and already have agriculture unlocked. And I want them to have architecture unlocked, right? The first two big ones that most people usually strive for. I want them to already have that. Right, so all of that can be, you, I mean, you can sit here and you can dig through all of this, right? There's beers, beeswax, any any little thing that's a material, that's a food, um, even just something as simple, here, come down to the bottom, something as simple as just wood, right? I don't want them to have to worry about chopping down a tree, so I'm just going to go ahead and give them 500 wood, because I don't want to waste time chopping down trees at the beginning. I want them to get right into construction, whatever. You can go ahead and set that all right here. So this is the big section where you're going to set a lot of the constraints for this playthrough. And then what's nice is in the future, say you, you, you go through your playthrough right, it doesn't end well. You're like, well, well, shit, I need to start it over. So you come back over and you do the same thing again. It's already pre-built for you. You just pick new people and you go again and again and again and so on and so on. And it's fantastic. It will work every single time as far as the pre-built. Then how you play, obviously that's completely up to you. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. So let's tip tricks, right? Then we're gonna go over to the next part, which now is our overall scenario. We're gonna name our settlement. Tip trick, right? Or you can click the randomize and you'll get all kinds of really cool names. Your heraldry, so this is gonna be your flag, right? That represents who you are. This is the last one that I did, which was for my Christmas special. You can do a couple re-rolls, you know, stuff like that. That one's always a really nice one. Um, or you can go in here to edit, and you can actually pick the colors, the symbols, right? So, like, you can see that they picked the first symbol was a bone arrow, bone arrow, bone arrow, bone arrow. And then they just used the transfer, you know, to rotate it and tilt it and move it. And that's how they got the pattern. Pretty simple, quick and easy, right? Nothing, nothing too, you know, rocket surgery going on there. Now, map types. This is going to be crucial for choosing. You've got valley, hillside, mountain, and marsh. Each one comes with benefits, and each one comes with drawbacks. Valley is kind of your noob friendly. It's your standard, right? As it says here, plentiful vegetation, fertile soil and clay, moderate amount of limestone, lesser amounts of iron and salt. It's going to have mild winters, but fierce summers. So it's not necessarily all that bad. Then you come to the hillside. Uneven terrain, so you're going to get more of, you know, some variable heights and stuff like that. Suitable for a good defensive position. That is definitely true. I do a lot of hillside playthroughs because you can use the terrain to your advantage. You can cut off enemy forces by being, you know, up on a, on a cliffside, raining down arrow fire, and they can't do anything but just stand there and take it. It does have a fair amount of limestone and clay, a moderate amount of fertile soil and vegetation. That's, I mean, it's kind of a good mix 50-50, right? With the valley, you're going to get a lot of dirt, a lot of fertile, but very, very little as far as the limestone. This one, you're going to get a good mix, right? Some of your mountain, your hilltops, your mountain peaks are going to be limestoned, or they could be clayed, or they could be coal. You know, you get a little bit of a mix of that. Your vegetation will be kind of down in these little valleys and gullies, but it's still there. You can still go and take that dirt Unlock terraforming and then maybe expand your own little dirt area somewhere to then do proper, you know, grid farming, something more commercial. Now, mountain is going to be for those, I would recommend this to those who have played this a few times that understand how it works, understand how resources are, right? Because you're going to have tons of limestone. You're going to have a good amount of gold and iron and silver, like it says. Lesser amounts, though, of fertile soil, clay, and vegetation. Right, so trees are going to be scarce, stuff like that. Berry bushes, hay, you know, barley, as far as stuff like that. Also, the other thing to consider is the wildlife itself. Somewhere in a nice fertile valley, you're going to get lots of deer, lots of fox. You know, up in the mountains, you're probably going to get maybe a bear, a couple wolves, maybe a goat or two. But it's going to be really hard. You're going to get very aggressive animals. You might get the occasional deer coming through. They might come through as like maybe a little mini herd of like three or four. But you're definitely going to have to consider resources as, as a important time management as well as everything else. 
Now the new one is the Marsh. I am also doing a Marsh playthrough right now, and that is my Viking series. So those of you watching that, thank you. Awesome. But we are playing that in a Marsh. Great opportunity for fishing. Tons of wood. Tons of fertile soil if you terraform it properly. Tons of ways to be able to use the water to your advantage. Right? I created essentially a Viking island. So when we get raided, they only have one point of entry onto the island. I barricaded that point and have basically created a kill zone. So you can definitely... And that's also a tactic you can do on hillside, mountain, valley. Right? If you take the time and actually kind of plan it out. You can use the terrain to your advantage, but how do you want to do it, right? So I used a mountain map on one of my last specials where I created essentially a staircase of death. I put towers up at the top for my archers to sit and made the enemies fight their way up a staircase, leaving them completely exposed to archer fire, and it worked brilliantly. But I used the terrain, the natural kind of grind up of a, of a hillside or a mountain, it to my advantage. So that's something to think about. Map size is exactly that, right? Do you want it to be smaller, medium, larger, right? I always play large. I want plenty of room to sprawl out, plenty of room to go gather resources, right? It is going to take a little bit of time, so that's a factor. Where smaller, obviously everything's going to be closer together, but with the larger, you have a higher chance of more things spawning. Now the seed a number will generate, right? So that's for this one. You know, you can keep clicking it. As you can see, the map is changing for each new seed number, right? Similar to Minecraft. Right here, you got a nice little double marsh going on with a valley and a hillside. So there's no mountain here, but there is a nice little double marsh. So something like that can happen. Um, there are seeds where all four are mountain or all four are valleys. Those are out there. Definitely Google going medieval seeds. Find the ones that are right for you. Let's say here we want to go with this marsh, right? That's what we chose for this playthrough. And we want a medium map. We don't want it to be too big. So again, this is just what we're doing for this scenario. Now comes the final and probably second most crucial part, which is our peoples. Right? So you can you can leave it as is. Grab these first two. You can re-roll the whole group, which will get a whole new batch over here. And you'll see that their group skills change as you re-roll right those there's two fine looking gentlemen that have a good balance of skills the only thing that concerns me with these two is three is the highest construction of the two gentlemen and that's this guy right here nicholas that's not good you want a, you want some good construction all right so let's keep re-rolling here all right here's a good good spread right Animal handling, botany, con carpentry, construction, culinary is good. Marksman is, could be desired. Good bit of smithing, speech craft, mining. Tailoring is kind of meh. Now you're like, okay, well, I, I like these guys, but I kind of want to tweak it a little bit. Or I like these guys, but, you know, Lambert here is awesome, but I'm not really a fan of Winifred. Then click right here and just re-roll him. Lambert stayed, and we got Harry now instead. And then check the numbers over here. Let's say, okay, he's kind of good too, but I still want to tweak it. Now, before we get into that, one thing to notice, he's a cannibal. Lambert is also a cannibal. Because again, we preset for this playthrough that everybody has to be a cannibal, right? That was a constraint for the settlers that we chose. And ironically, he's a willful butcher. He's a cannibal and he's a butcher. That's hilarious. He's a caring carpenter. Now, what does all this mean? Well, I'm going to show you right here. Advanced customization. Let's click it. And look at that. A whole bunch of new stuff opens up. These are your creation points, right? So for these two gentlemen, 340 points is the max that I can reach. Well, I'm only at 264, so I got a lot of wiggle room. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go ahead and bump up marksmanship to be nice and high for Harry as well as for Lambert, right? Because I gave them crossbows. They better know how to use them. So we're going to go ahead and bump those things up, right? He's our, our builder. He's our chef, our hunter, our medic, and he really likes bartering and trading. 
let's come over here to Harry. He's a builder, but he's a miner, and he also likes bartering and trading. But maybe let's lean him a little bit more intellectual. So we'll give him a couple more points there. All right, now his intellectual is higher. He has the top one because that's why he has the star. All right, let's let's bump this one up a little bit more too. All right, and oh, his uh, his tailoring. Let's go ahead and give him ten points there. Or you know what? No, I don't like that idea. Let me just give him one point. All right, these are all things you can play around, but you got to keep an eye on this down here. You can also adjust their age, their weight, their height, their religious alignment. You can give him pseudonyms. You can give him background, right? So by being caring, he gets plus five to animal handling. By being a carpenter, he gets plus 12 to carpentry. All right, so we might want to take this one off and let's put it on carpentry since that's kind of his thing. And then he gets the plus three to speechcraft. Now you can click on these and you can change. All right, we want to make him bloodthirsty. He'll get plus five to medicine. Make it bookish. He'll get plus three to medicine, plus three to intellect. Let's make him clever, plus five to intellect. Or cunning, plus five to botany. All right, there's tons of things. You can sit here, go through every single one. Make him toxic. He gets plus five to culinary. Kind of ironic. Wicked, plus five to smithing. So all these different things, if you want to boost a particular skill, there's a good bit there. And they're not just any one. There's a good mix. Like how this one, carpenter, it's carpentry and speechcraft. Right? If we make him a reeve, it's botany and smithing. Or a recruit, it's marksman, tailoring, and smithing. And it tells you, creation point cost, 22 points. So it would be 22 points of this to change that over. But what is carpentry? Carpentry is 15. Okay, so now split the difference. Right? So it's a 7 points. Do I have 7 points extra? Well, I do. So I could totally change that if I wanted to. Now you can t change the names here. You can change the body, the head, skin color, hair tone, hair type. There's obviously none because he's bald. And the facial hair. That can all be there. You can re randomize and just roll it and take what you want. Same thing here. Now, clicking the plus, you can give him traits. So one of my favorites is Vigorous. So hit point recovery and wound regeneration. Right? It makes them bounce back from combat a lot, lot better. Right? So we'll give him that. One of my other favorites to do is Industrious. Their global work speed will go up by 15%, which is the B. If you notice, he already came with the B. And then another one that I also like is Fleet Footed. It makes them very, very fast. Oh, oh, we can't, right? Because we went five over. But you're like, oh, well, that's okay. I don't need him to be as good with melee, right? Because he's going to be an archer. So there, I was able to get the points back and make it all happy. You can sit here and spend literally hours building every single character. And if you do that, I highly recommend that you come up here and you save it. Save the character. You can see all the different loadouts I have. When I did my cannibals, right? I got Jeffrey Dahmer, James Reed, Mary Donner. When I did my 100 sub special, right? I got Tina, Naked Alfred, got Cool Bean. I've got some Twitch ones that I've made. My Lone Ronin, Osric. I've got my Mr. and Mrs. Claus, and then my elves, Buddy, Bernard, and Noel. Right? So those are all the different builds that I've made. And I save them because say I liked a certain template or say I want to do a playthrough with just elves or dwarves. I remember, oh, hey, I have an elf named, you know, Buddy Peppermint who has a really good build as a builder and as a carpenter. I can bring him in, maybe just change his name and his look a little bit so he blends in with the new theme. But then the character is already built and ready to go for me. I don't have to sit here and re-grind out every single time. So definitely highly recommend if you want to get a little bit more nitpicky with your characters, do that. And I also highly recommend that you spend all of these points over here. And then you just uncheck it, and it just drops it back to normal. Right? You can even click it, see it'll double check it, that yeah, everything was fine. And now we're going to go ahead and click next. This is the final look over. Right? What is our village name? Tip Trick. Who are our settlers? We've got Lambert. And we've got Harry. And it gives us the breakdown of everything. Their perks, their skills, religion, age, weight, height, background. It's all here. We chose a hard difficulty under survival, right? 
our intro is just blah, and then we chose a, a medium marsh, so it gives us that. And then we can just click whether or not we want little tutorial pop-ups during the game, and then you click embark. And it will come up with an opening screen with the little thing maybe that you typed up here and a little thing it auto-generates. You can read through that. Gives you a nice story to kind of set the tone. And then you begin. You jump in. You create your world. Create your story. And it was built the way that you intended to to see how things play out. And if you're still kind of iffy about it, definitely rewatch this video. We'll do it all clean through again, right? Or watch some of my videos and see how I go about building. All of my series, I do essentially an episode zero, as I call them, which is the walkthrough for that series of how I built the characters, how I built the scenario, everything like that. And I post those all on Patreon. So if you'd like to see, you know, for the Valhalla series or the Rise of the Dwarves or for the Primal Ways, my cannibal playthrough, or sorry, Heathen Cuisine is my cannibal playthrough. Primal Ways was my melee-only combat. If you want to do and see any of those styles, you can head over to Patreon, become a member, see my episode zeros over there. It's kind of an exclusive I do just for that community. But for you, those of you here on YouTube, here's the full walkthrough of how I go about doing each of those things. So I really hope that this was helpful. I hope that you enjoy playing the game going forward now that you know how to adjust the, and tweak the little background bits, right? Because this will also affect all of your incoming settlers. So we set a height requirement of 100 to 120 centimeters for this tip trick little bit that we did here. All of our new incoming settlers will be within that height range. We also gave them the requirement that 100% had to be cannibal. All future settlers will be cannibals as well, right? That's not just applying to our starters. That's applying for the entire game going forward. We're always guaranteed those bits. We're always guaranteed that they will be 100% Oak Brethren. We're always guaranteed that they will not require any religious activity at all. That will be completely satisfied all the time. Or you can set it the other way, where they will just be completely religiously miserable all the time. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But you can, right? You can set it to where zero out of zero, they're just going to be pissed and always needing a religious activity. And no matter how much you throw at them, it is never enough. I mean, if you want that challenge, go for it. Do it. The sky is the limit. Everything you need to know about how to find those different features, how to change things up, it's all right here in this nice, tight little 30-minute guide. I hope it was super helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, hit the like button, drop a comment, let me know how I'm doing, how I'm not doing, and please, please, please smash that subscribe, join the community, we've got tons more tips and tricks videos coming, going forward into the new year, I got tons more series lined up this year, we got some returning stuff, some new stuff, it's going to be awesome, so join us, and if you'd like to stay in the know even further, you can head over to Instagram and follow me at Bears and Beans Gaming. I follow all gamers back. And for additional support, you can head over, like I said, to Patreon, become a member over there and get all kinds of behind the scenes exclusive, as well as unedited content. Or you can check the link in the description for my merch. I got tons of good stuff up there now. But again, thank you so much for stopping by. I really hope that this helps you in customizing your playthrough going forward. You guys are an amazing, awesome community. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.